Malik Willis is going to... Uh-huh. His stock is going to go up. This is his last throw of his pro day. They're calling it the show-off throw. Go ahead and play that thing. They, this is... Hey, this is fun to watch here now. Scramble right now. They're chasing him down. Oh, my God. He's at the 34-yard line. That ball in stride. Oh, bucket. No. Damn. 67 yards in stride. Runs down the field. Throws the L up for Liberty, I believe. How you doing? Keep it moving. Celebrates with his boys who probably never could have imagined going to Liberty and having a pro day that's on NFL Network or having over 100 scouts and coaches at it. Congrats to everybody, including Malik, who has been nothing short of spectacular this entire draft season. (laughs) Tomlin and Colbert in the back of that video grinning like the butcher's dog. We might go up to two and get him. I mean, what are we talking about? Ooh, AJ. A Detroit line right there, Tony. AJ, that ball was <laughs> hawk there. From helping the homeless person over here, from answering Ian Rappaport saying he's excited for his teammates, for all the coaches yep. that are here to watch them, and he's excited a couple other guys are going to make it to the NFL now. This dude seems to be the guy. Yeah, I mean, he has crazy physical tools, too. Yeah, just Off look at balance, how athletic this 60, dude is and how strong his arm is. That's like 68 that yards. Absolutely perfect. Off balance. Perfect. Damn. And also how he runs down and celebrates with him, and then all of his teammates come down. They all celebrate together. That's what the coaches love. Yeah, and by the way, there's a chance that some old white would be like, why is it? (laughs) And then as his entire teammates go and, like, join him, man, that's a cool moment. They're like, hey, we just fucking put on a show out here. Like, someone, just like Ian said, some wide receiver that just ran routes for him that maybe some team never heard of or whatever, never watched, like, he's going to get picked up and get a shot because of this. Malik Willis lifting up everybody around him. It's a beautiful thing. I can't wait to see what happens with him. Appears to be an absolute stud as a human and as a football player. Let's see how high he could possibly go. Maybe we'll ask two. Chris Ballard, like, how high could he go? Two? Yeah. Everybody's saying he's going two. Yeah, he's at the same odds as some safety out of Notre Dame, plus 380 to go number two overall. Will that be to Detroit or somebody trading up? Who knows? Everybody needs a quarterback. You can get a rookie quarterback who might be able to do what that dude's able to do. They also said the combine, his um, recall of plays mm-hmm. and what was going on really impressed them because he played at Liberty, so they didn't know what degree of football IQ they forced him to have there. He impressed everybody. Let's go, Malik. Congrats. Hey. Oh. I was trying to th- I, I was trying to think of the tweet I saw yesterday, maybe from Pro Football Focus or somebody. I guess there was like 26 quarterbacks drafted in the first round from 2006 to 2016. None of them are with the original team they're on. I saw that. It is so hard. And by the way, we did not check that stat. I don't think you did either. We just assumed it was right. But there, it is so hard yeah. to find your quarterback. Is Malik Willis the number one quarterback in this class in everybody's eyes? Or do you think that changed a little bit yesterday with how Kenny Pickett performed? Because we heard the Carolina Panthers GM say, fucking get over here, boy. Fucking hold that football. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. Let me correct the record. They did not ask Whoa. to uh, see his hands. They did not uh, ask man, to bullshit. measure oh, his shit. hand size. Man. He was brought over to them so to look at his hand size. As Scott Fitterer was checking it out, and then he pointed out to Ben McAdoo, the offensive coordinator, hey, check out his hands. Okay. They didn't ask for it. Somebody brought him over and said, show him your hands. And at that point, <laughs> they took a look at his hands, and they were like, oh, oh those look like hands. And then that was really the end of that. Boy. Oh, so there wasn't any – There was, it wasn't the Carolina Panthers saying, hey, fucking boy, get on over mm-hmm. here. It wasn't that? No. No. I mean, also, Scott Fitter is from Seattle, so even though he's from <laughs> Carolina, he doesn't talk like that. No, he does. Um, <laughs> Has to. Listen, we didn't but, know. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's from Seattle. Right. No, I get it. I mean, look, when Marty Herney was there, he, did talk, he does talk like that, so that actually made sense, but he's not anymore. Um, no, I, and I think they were, you know, it's funny because what I heard, they basically were like, I think we're going to go viral. And then they went viral looking at his hand size, which, you know, it's, I know it's a joke and I think hand size is comical, but it is a thing. Like if he's going to go to Pittsburgh, like, oh, well, he's yeah. going to go to Pittsburgh, he's going to have to be able to hold a football in rainy and cold weather. Like that's actually a real thing. Yeah, it's a real thing, especially with, um, you know, like the way pass rushers are nowadays and like just trying to chop or get to the hands or get to the body. I mean, you got four fours coming off the edge now at all times. There's a chance you're going to get hit in the pocket without getting sacked. Can the ball pop out easier if your hands aren't as big? Probably. But I was actually thinking about this yesterday. Got some offensive line drills going on. Hey! 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 